in three, two, one. Welcome back to the Stars Made Me Do It. We have Martha here interviewing our first Capricorn Moon guest. Welcome, Margaret. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so Lovely ex- ladies. Yeah, so excited for you to be here. And like quick note before we get started <laughs> as a disclosure that both Martha and I currently have COVID. So if we sound different, if we're coughing, if we're dying, just know that. And, and know that it's a Capricorn moon and a Scorpio moon are like, the show must go on. We got to record anyways. <laughs> so enjoy our nasally voices. Enjoy Incredible it. work ethic, ladies. Yes. I well, as a go. Capricorn moon, Margaret, we know you'd appreciate it. You're like, oh, I'm not that sick. I can still do all of these tasks. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Um, another fun fact before we like totally get into everything about you. Um, for those who don't know, Margaret is the one who sings our intro, like to the podcast. Wow. I didn't know. Yeah. So Margaret is our talented, uh, (laughs) (laughs) intro singer and I love that intro. Right. Right. We created like Sierra uh, and I co-created the like other noises and the, yes, (laughs) I, I (laughs) I was the piano for it. And Margaret was the voice. But yeah, so before we get into all of that, why don't you tell us a little bit about you, maybe where you're from, where you are now or anything important we should know. Okay. Um, So I'm originally from Dallas, Texas, but I've been living in Paris uh, for eight years now. And um, I'm a socioanthropologist. I'm doing my doctoral degree uh, in French. Um, and I'm studying, <laughs> I'm studying, I know it's like fucking wild. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm studying, so uh, climate activism in the fashion industry, some different so like cool. associations that are trying to, um, change the industry to make it more eco-friendly and more respectful of people and of planet. Um, and I'm personally involved as well. I'm an activist. Um, that's why you're so, so stylish too. Oh, that's so Damn. nice. <laughs> I don't buy anything new. I'm like uh, one of those crazy people that buys nothing new ever, except when it's, you know, something I can't find used or, you know, um, but yeah, I have a tendency as, uh, as I think uh, other Capricorn moon people will attest to take on a few too many things onto my plate, <laughs> but always managed to fit, figure it out. Um, and Sierra has helped me understand that, um, why I tend to do that because <laughs> I just thought I was a psycho. No, I'm kidding. Um, so some sort of a masochist psycho, but now I'm like, Oh, I'm just a normal Capricorn moon person. Cool. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Yeah. That's, I think that's it. I have a cat. That's all about me that, you know, is relevant. Yeah, her name well, is we're Betty. We're gonna dive into more. You're gonna learn okay. more about yourself today. <laughs> oh <Yeah>. no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. So, what are your thoughts on astrology? Do you believe in astrology? So, I was like traditionally very skeptical, um, but I think I always looked at my horoscope and everything growing up, like you know, and the fashion mags that I would read and stuff, and it always seemed, you know to be general to the point where it could be true for just about anybody. Yeah. But I think once you get into the level of astrology that you guys are into with like the very specific birth charts and positions and stuff, it starts to, things start to emerge that are just too specific to ignore. And so I will say that I'm not, you know, I don't plan my life around it, but I do think that it's interesting. Like some days where I'm feeling particularly like turbulent or, stress or whatever I'll look at co-star and be like oh co-star is literally saying it's a stressful day for me (laughs) and I'm like it it just brings me some comfort like yeah in some ways um and I think it's very interesting um I think it's super interesting you know I like tarot I like some some other like Sierra bought me my first tarot deck actually yeah (laughs) um so yeah I'm into some uh I'm into some of the you know things in the realm Yes. Um, yeah. I feel like sun sign horoscopes are 
or there's issues to that because really if you're going to write a horoscope it should be to rising signs but that's a whole different story we can talk about that another day we should talk about that another day we should yeah (laughs) actually it makes sense because i mean i'm a gem and I and there's always all these like you're not supposed to about, tell yet oh, not supposed to. <laughs> oh my god I'm so sorry it's okay but <laughs> but like I I oh, knew shit. there I knew there was some mercury stuff going yeah. on yeah I knew that Martha already I'm so knew. hot <laughs> I'm just kidding that was really stupid <laughs> I'm so sorry I messed up oh, <laughs> it's okay it's okay I Jeez. knew there was something in there so it just isn't like um isn't Mars in retrograde or something right now. It's gonna be blame it on that. Is a, Mercury is about to Mercury, go in retrograde. Mercury is about to go in retrograde, which is yeah. There it's you gonna go. mess That's up. Why I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm so sorry. No, it's Damn. all good. It's all good. Well, but I identify a lot more as a as a Capricorn actually. So when Sierra did my chart, I was like, oh. Okay. You're super analytical, like a Capricorn. Like the way you express yourself, you talk oh. fast, like a Gemini, oh. but you use words that are much more Capricorn-y. You're very like analytical with the words you use, I feel like, tactical. I like that. Yeah. I hope I didn't completely mess up. You your- messed no, up I still, everything. I don't know your no. rising sign. Yeah, yeah so don't, don't say your rising, your rising sign. sign, but I don't know that <laughs> yeah. you remember. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> terrible <laughs> oh my gosh anyway. well getting into capricorn moon type questions because this is a classic one do you feel like you had a lot of responsibility especially as a child yes and i hope my parents don't ever listen to this um yeah i think um man mom and dad if you're listening love y'all so much but uh i think i had a lot of emotional responsibility as a child um a lot of logistic logistical responsibility over myself I had to often like remind my parents to sign things for school and continually hound them to sign things for school. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think I did a lot of management. Um, and that, that's a trend that's definitely continued. I think, um, I think, I'll, I guess I've learned that a lot of Capricorn moons sort of fill that role automatically, but I think it was a sort of vacuum in my house that needed to be filled. I maybe, maybe more efficiently, Maybe yeah. I was frustrated as a child with the lack of efficiency. <laughs> and yeah. so I took over. I don't know, but I definitely feel like I uh I filled those shoes a little bit growing I, up. I love that word you used, like management. <laughs> like I was the manager of my family. I love that. That's like the ultimate Capricorn moon child thing. Like, well, I'm just gonna manage my parents and figure this out for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So definitely the responsibility as a child, especially when it comes to um like, I don't know, like even practical things, like I need this for school. And normally that is a parent job to get the things done for school. But me as the child, I have to remind my parents to do like the practical things for my everyday type of existence. Mm. I also wanted a lot of like control over what I was, you know, if I needed like five pens and 10 pencils, <laughs> I like, I wanted to pick them out. Like yes. Lisa Frank, everything, obviously, you know, obviously. It was the nineties. I had my Lisa Frank coordinated accessories, matching folder, spiral, you name it. But I was like, <laughs> I want to pick out these things. I don't want, you know, the store brand pencils, mom and dad. <laughs> I want the special no fancy pencil. ones. <laughs> no basic pencils up in this I place. I so no. feel that. <laughs> Ballpoint pens only. No, I don't <laughs> I don't know if that's a Capricorn moon thing or that you and I both have like prominent Gemini placements um, because I'm like, heck yes to anything office supplies. And no, let me tell supplies. you, let me tell you right now. It's not the Gemini placement because my mind is like, <laughs> do not give me a planner because my ass is not following that. I'm too all over the place. <laughs> okay. Dude, my parents would take me to like Office Depot as a treat. I would get me like too. excited. Me I would too. be like, let's go to Office Depot, please. Like... <laughs> I was Martha, not a normal I mean, child. Margaret, literally, that is what like my dad's like, I have to go get some business stuff at, at Staples. And I was like, can Dude. I please come? I want to be amongst the pens. Like, I want to Dude, be- that's so many fucking pens, like pen gasm. Yes. <laughs> yes. Incredible. Yes. Purple pens. <laughs> yes. All the different highlighters. I had this highlighter that like you could turn it. It had like five different colors on it. I mean, it was the shit. I think so I still good. have it. So good. Like a graveyard of like old school supplies that my parents have. Of course, too, that I just, like, cannot part with because of you know, yeah, memories. But, 
the earth moon in you is like, do not throw away the used yeah. pens. <laughs> I can repurpose them as necklaces for my cat. <laughs> I've never done that. Betty's like, you should. don't you dare. <laughs> Betty does not want that. She's looking at me like, you crazy ass. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. This. Okay. How about aside from <laughs> the pen hoarding? <laughs> oh, sorry. This question. Here we go like that has a negative connotation i just don't appreciate um Basira, i'm a pen but... hoarder okay all right okay well, if it has okay, a negative connotation much... no, this was you. an intervention uh... <laughs> there's too much gemini energy i'm gonna bring it back <laughs> i know i know <laughs> martha needs to bring it okay back. guys i'm bringing it back i'm bringing it back to the okay. questions okay. i'm not the capricorn moon here guys what's happening okay. i don't know <laughs> how would your closest friends describe you just a couple words oh dear uh a lot <laughs> okay um oh shit oh damn i don't know. i curse a lot there you go um let's see <laughs> the curse let's see. of the group i'm um emotional mm-hmm. caring and I, I hope i would say i'm funny you are funny. i think you're funny yeah oh yeah. sweet okay <laughs> okay emotional uh, caring and funny yeah I like that. Okay. I would also I say like accurate. something in there. Like when I think of you, I definitely think of um, like you were saying what you're going like to get your PhD for just like very um, environmentally and like world conscious, you know, that's definitely what I think of you. Sweet. Yeah. I, I think that's a core part of my personality <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And we, we have a question a little bit like lower down on our list, but I feel Uh-oh. like this could go well with yeah. this question. Did Do you feel like your friends come to you for like advice and think of you as like the practical person in situations? Uh, yeah, I think I, I definitely like to be a sympathetic ear. Um, and I, well, I, I go to, I have therapy. I go to therapy a lot. And I, I think as a child, I offered a lot of unsolicited advice. And I think that was just kind of like in my nature, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Um, And so now I'm trying to really work on, and I think I'm successfully working on um, just being a better listener and offering advice if the person asks me or if the person's really coming to me for my expertise and just learning to, yeah. Yeah, Okay, cool. Try to be. Wow, I really like that. Yeah, Yeah. I feel like that's a big Gemini thing, learning how to listen in life. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because mm-hmm. Gemini's are like be the, too great, bossy. the great <laughs> conversationalist, but it's also like, uh, it's which some people who are great listeners are not often great conversationalists, but the Gemini mm-hmm. in the crowd is going to be the one who's going to keep the conversation flowing. But then, yeah, like that other part of it is learning to like, what do you do when you're not the one carrying the conversation? It's cool. Yeah. yeah. It's hard That's when you're dating self-aware. too, just like, piggybacking off of that like remember when I was single and I would be on these dates and everything and like oh yeah I would just be like man like is this going well or am I just good at talking to people because I like I taught English for so long and it's like normally like a bad date people are like yeah there was just a lot of like awkward moments and like lulls in the conversation and it's like yeah I never really had that in my (laughs) dates like maybe (laughs) once or twice but like I'm just good at I mean I feel like I could talk to a brick wall you know, can you totally give me a relate. couple of glasses of wine, you know, like I'd be like, Hey, so what's it, you know, I'm just kidding. But I mean, I guess just <laughs> being good at talking to people is kind of a blessing and a curse. Cause you're like, Oh, do I, it's that's like so a, funny. I can I totally know. relate to that. It's Dates weird, are just you know. like a, a great excuse to be able to talk to people, however much you want. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Well, now I'm in a committed relationship and I, I love my, my French boo thing. A French it. thing. <laughs> we all got a French thing here. <laughs> we do. Yeah. How stereotypical. Ugh. Love it. North Americaners coming over and uh ended up with Frenchies. Love it. We oui, oui. <laughs> <laughs> How would you say? Okay, we're getting back deep into Cat Moon. Um, how openly would you say you talk about your emotions when you are struggling? I know you said that you go to therapy. Is that like where you would talk to about most of the things you're struggling with or how openly would you say you talk about this? Um, it's something I definitely had to learn, um, first to talk about and dialogue about with myself. And I think as a child, I wasn't necessarily, I had a great childhood. I'm not trying to bash any, anything, but I think as a child, I wasn't, um, 
maybe provided the best example of like emotionally healthy communication. Mm -hmm. And uh, that still seems to be a theme in my house with my, my parents, they seem to still struggle with emotional communication. So it's something as an adult um, that I've really tried to work on. And uh, I don't know if like the other placements in my chart, no, no spoiler alerts. I don't remember them because I'm terrible. <laughs> I don't remember them. Um, but I don't know if that's like comp- compensated for somehow my chart or something. But I feel like um, I didn't have that tendency maybe naturally. But I also found out recently that I'm a highly sensitive person. And I always kind of, I felt a lot of emotional turbulence as a child, but I just learned to just not, just not visit that. And so now delving into that and and uh, discovering it as a strength rather than some sort of weird alienating weakness um, is really liberating for me. So you were the one getting who told comfortable me. talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You're the one who told me all about like HSP, like highly sensitive person. And I didn't know about it. Do you know about that, Martha? <laughs> yes. Because I didn't. And I was like, this is my mom to a T. And I told her about it. And she was like, oh, so all of these things I've felt my entire life have a name. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's really you feel like totally crazy and different from everyone around you. It's really uh, powerful when you realize, oh, there's a whole (laughs) whole subset of the population that's exactly like this. It's really uh, reassuring. Yeah. So it's become like a journey to get to the point of being more, um, I guess, open about talking about the things you struggle with, especially emotionally. But you've like Mm -hmm. through discovering the ways in which you do even maybe like feel things emotionally. Yeah. It's been more of like a, something that you've been more and more able to, I guess, talk about. Yeah, totally. And I think like, I think there was always a lot of shame um, for me to delve into like what a lot of people would classify as like negative emotions, like anger or frustration or whatever. And so I think I just repressed a lot of that for most of my life. And now, you know, learning that it's actually very healthy to feel a whole spectrum of emotion um, and learning the right vocabulary to talk about and quitting, you know, demonizing myself for feeling these things. Yeah. It's also just in and of itself a huge weight lifted that I wish more people would, you know, have at least a few sessions of therapy to kind of get to that truth in their own lives. Cause I think we just have a lot of shame around anger and and mental health struggles and things that, um, the shame that we put ourselves through is probably the the worst part of all of that. Yeah. I feel like everything you just said there relates back to something we talked about on the Capricorn moon episode, like part one, where we were saying like a lot of Capricorn moons, um, would rather just like not deal with emotions because they're like, well, what's the point of that? Like, how is that going to help me if Mm -hmm. that, and I think it takes like getting older for a lot of Capricorn moons to be like, okay, well, actually I need to go through those if I'm going to develop in all parts of my life. Mm -hmm. Like your emotions are like the spider web to everything. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just feel like that's like an evolved Capricorn moon thing. Cause when they're younger, it's like, well, I don't need to be feeling that because it doesn't benefit anybody. So yeah. It's like, we're not going to access that because it's just, it's not efficient right now. Yes. <laughs> to well, as a child, I was like crazy competitive and like, I didn't understand that like me wanting to like, I would be like, oh, I finished my assignment first. Like you guys are still working. Like, oh, you guys aren't <laughs> that smart, huh? Like I was such a jerk. Oh my and God. I didn't, I was not really emotionally intelligent. I would say, um, or like but- tuned into the, the emotions of other people around me and that like, goes think, right in to our yeah. next question where yes. it's like, do you think your emotional state is tied to how successful you are feeling? Like you were stoked as a kid. Cause you were like, mm. I finished first. Like I was more successful in this, in this uh, assignment. Like, and do you feel like that's a trend? Like that's continuing through your life? Um, I think I'm learning to distinguish those two things still, but I have ex- insanely high standards for myself and I definitely suffer from imposter syndrome, just like a lot of successful females, especially a lot of successful women in academia. Um, And it's never quite good enough. And I'm learning to really like, I'm trying to cultivate a a gratitude mindset and really like wake up in the morning instead of being like, damn, I still haven't done that. I still haven't written that article or finished that book. And to instead just try to reprogram my mindset. And it, I would say it's a slow, painful process, maybe because my Capricorn moon, like, 
domination is just so, you know, powerful in my head, but it's something, um, yeah, I don't think it comes naturally to me at all to be like uh, celebrating, you know, my progress instead of being like, I still haven't achieved this. Like, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, Uh, no, I totally get that with like, I, I, I didn't until I, when, um, when we were coming up with these questions, I felt so called out. I'm like, do I, is my emotional state tied into how successful I'm feeling? Are most people's not? (laughs) Yeah, no, it's, it's, and it also like, I know that it's not exactly related, but I know that you and I talked about this the last time. It's funny when we recorded our Capricorn moon episode at the end, we were like, go hug your Capricorn moon friend. And then I literally saw you right afterwards. And I was like, we need need some self support, (laughs) but like how I, I feel like both of us are the type of people who are like, if that person would just listen to me, their life would be so much better. And it's because we have this, like, I know you're making a face like, yeah, I mean, I mean, wouldn't it? And like, which is not (laughs) fair of us because it's like, but it's not my life. It's their life. But then it's like this because of this like goal oriented, like success. um, I don't know, way of thinking and seeing the world. And like we talked about in the first episode, like walking into a room and a Capricorn moon will immediately know what needs to be fixed in order to make something function better. And so it's like, that's so crazy. Yeah. Right. And so it just feels like it's a, it's a frustrating thing because it almost, it's that what you said with those high standards where I feel like I have such high standards for myself and the people that I care about too, that it's Mm -hmm. like, even if I achieve shit, it never feels like it's good enough. So it's like such high standards and such high disappointment because of Mm -hmm. that. It's like this, you have so far to fall because we have such high standards and it's yeah. Yeah. So I definitely, as a kid too, I was so harsh on others. Like, I was like, what do you mean? You didn't understand the math problem. Like, (laughs) idiot. Like, (laughs) I was really an asshole. Like, I'm sure everybody in my elementary school, like, has had some sort of trauma linked to like mean shit. I, I was like, did not even, I was not there to make friends. Literally. I was like, oh my God. This Raise is your school. hand if you've We're been personally learn. victimized. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, literally, yeah. No, I think, but I also, I was bullied because I was just very different, um, which I think is part of, well, I don't know anyway, just whatever. I but, feel um, like everyone can look back to their elementary and be like, yeah, I know the Capricorn moon kid <laughs> in my class. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I would know. like correct the teacher and shit even. Like I was on one. I was on, I was oh, on several. Man. I remember that kid was like, I'm going to be a doctor and go to this school and do that when I grow up. And I was like, now looking back, I'm like, damn, they were that Capricorn moon kid. Like that's interesting. So organized I, and shit. I wasn't that kid. I definitely wasn't yeah. that kid. I, um, I would like very timidly kind of be like, I think that this is what you like. I, I wasn't the kid who would question the teacher as to if what they said was right or wrong, but I would always be the one to keep them on track. Like if they were like, what, we, what were we talking about at the end of last mm. class? I would have the notes written down and be like, we stopped when you said verbatim blank end quote. Yeah. And they'd be like, oh, okay, thank you. You know? So I feel like that was more who I was, but I don't, I don't know that. I don't know. Did you go to elementary school with me? Was I that person? <laughs> um, <laughs> You were that kid with like the special oh pens, just ready to listen. I had all the I pens. A, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I was definitely that kid in, in university where the, if the professors like needed somebody to give notes to somebody that missed class, they were like, ask Margaret. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Cause I took like obsessively accurate notes. And in French, that was something that's, that still frustrates me to this day is that like my capacity for note taking and like detail retention is just not on and, like, par. And that's so Capricorn skills. moon though. That's so Capricorn moon because you literally like, you see that as like, I'm not up to the standard. I do that to myself too. I'm not yeah. up to the standard. Meanwhile, it's like, you know, when Guillaume met you, he was like, I literally couldn't tell that she wasn't French. And I've never felt that with any of your other friends, even the ones who speak that well. Like, you know, I have friends that are very fluent, but he's like, you literally can't tell that Margaret's not French. And the fact that you're getting your PhD in French, which is not your like maternal language, like that's just so that's such a Capricorn moon thing, in my opinion, where it's like to you. And I I feel it because I do the same thing. It's like you're focusing on the fact that you can't take notes as fast and efficiently in French as you can in English. Meanwhile, you're not you're not like giving yourself the credit for the fact that you're getting your fucking PhD in French and, yeah. you know, and can like hold your own 100% in it. It's just like, I don't know. I feel like that's a thing too. 
Well, also yeah, no. like it it's makes sense that you're hard on yourself when it comes to like languages and communication because of your Gemini, but then you're like extra hard about how efficient you are because of the Capricorn moon. Yes. But like anything language, it's like that Gemini is just going to be extra important to you. Oh, That's yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think I need to try harder to be like patting myself on the back for um, yeah my my efforts. Absolutely. <laughs> No, it, I think I think everybody does, but I think Capricorn moons really need to work on that. Yeah, and I so, think part right. of adulthood has brought like a lot of softening of my expectations of others, and of well, maybe mm. less myself, but understanding like when I was a kid, I had not tapped into that like empathic side of um, the HSP, which yeah. now I consider myself a very you know empathic, empathetic person. But as a child, um, that emotional intelligence, like I would say, was kind of on mute. And I was mm-hmm. really like a little like, you know, capitalist manager running around like <laughs> <laughs> reprimanding everybody. <laughs> Apparently, oh my God, my parents told me this story. When we, I was home for the holidays. Apparently one time we were at the grocery store and I was like lecturing this lady because she was holding her baby wrong and not supporting the baby's head. And I was like, ma'am, you know, you really cannot hold your baby this way. This is dangerous. And I was like six years old. <laughs> oh like, my God. Telling this lady how to hold her baby. Like, and she was like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. And I was like, you should really know these things. <laughs> like I was being such an asshole. Oh my Big god. Capricorn moon energy. Like, Can you just picture real. that lady though? And like the six-year-old, just like the <laughs> six-year-old old soul like coming at her like <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Like I was like, you guys are exaggerating. And then my whole family was like, yeah, no. no. Like, <laughs> sounds like you. <laughs> I was like, fuck. Okay. <laughs> uh, well. Oh my god. All right. Next anyway, question. Okay, if yeah. you had uninterrupted alone chill time, what would you spend your time doing? Oh man. How PG 13 is this podcast? It's can I, it's not, there's no limit. It's not, there's no, limits. I would be, if I don't, if I really don't have any obligations, how much, how much alone time do I have? Uninterrupted uh, alone time. Uninterrupted? A, day. A whole day. <laughs> A whole day. Let's see. I would smoke a big fat joint okay so i can we just helps me totally disconnect and relax so i would i would i would smoke a dupes and then um you gotta turn your brain off sometimes yeah i would like to say that i'd like journal and do some yoga but to be honest i would probably <laughs> make myself some sort of like overly complicated ridiculous meal that would take me hours because i'm so stoned and then i would eat it and just like watch netflix and Man, you're cat. really throwing me off. I don't know what your rising sign is off of everything you just said. <laughs> I would probably, I would maybe try to, you know, do some yoga at the end of the day, but that's like a second day. If you have two know. days uninterrupted. <laughs> yeah. But the first day, usually I, the thing is I take on so much usually that I have to just completely check out. It's also because of the HSP thing. Like I have days yeah, first where I'll day just you do veg nothing. out. Second like, day. I have to just turn off my brain and yeah, yeah for like, sure. Okay, interesting. Maybe play some music because I play music. Oh yeah, that's another thing that we didn't really yeah. get into. That's one of oh, your yeah, like we... a big hobby because we yeah, know that I you sang our intro. That. Yeah, <laughs> I have a band. We're on Spotify. Yeah, share yeah. share your band stuff. Yeah, share yeah. it. Oh, because um, it's like my friend, my friend and I, Phil. It's really like his his baby, and I sing. We we co-write some of the lyrics, but it's really mostly his brainchild. He's amazing, um, and it's like an indie group, and so. <gasps> On my own, I do like kind of soul and like jazz covers, but for this group, I'm like very breathy, like indie type of singing. Um, But it's really fun. When I was home, we recorded like four or five songs. So they're going to be coming out soon. We're going to release an EP. What's the Um, name? Where can they find it? Where can people listen to find it? The band is called Saturday Club and we're on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. Although, you know, Phil, the music videos, like, some of them are real out there, like little <laughs> plastic dinosaurs and shit. I love it. But it's very, it's very Phil, like confinement vibes. I I love him. He's great. But uh, yeah, like we don't have any like music official, like music videos with both of us, but I feel like that's probably on the horizon at some point. Very it's just Dallas, another Texas project. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's just another project I have that it's like, don't have time to do all these things. 
And then Margaret, I mean, Martha's the one who said that you had all your Capricorn Moon friends are like closet guitar player singing people. (laughs) Literally, (laughs) literally. That's so funny. Like, Sierra, you play the piano. I just found that out this episode. Like, what? Closet. Oh, yeah. I've played piano since I was five. (laughs) Yeah, like, I had no idea. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. It's really interesting. Like, maybe it's because the music kind of makes sense to our, like, organized chaos. Yeah. In our brains. Yeah, I think it's also like, because I think that does also come down to the Gemini like vibes that you and I both have. Plus my Sag vibes Mm. is the multitasking, needing a bunch of projects always going on at once. Um, Also, music is like a tangible expression of your emotions, which is like very earthy. mm, I love that. I love it. I love when I'm like playing. Oh my God. I just got goosebumps because I'm thinking about the part. Like there's this one song that I play on piano where like when I get to this one part of it, if I'm in it, I get goosebumps everywhere. And it's just like, Ooh. it's like one of those things that just like, it's like a, a certain part of a song that just totally like, it's like the big, like you're banging it out in the piano moment. And I love that. I absolutely love that when you get to like oh, certain, that's beautiful. when you're totally like Taurus energy. Is Moon it in the second house? Energy. It's not in the so, second house. No. I know. <laughs> okay, that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, we'll get into that. But um, I will say one thing is like, I feel like I'm very hard on myself sometimes because I have so much going on and I don't leave time for myself to be creative. Mm. Then it becomes this vicious cycle where it's like, I want to play music, but I need to be in sort of like a relaxed, like happy state to want to play music. But playing music would probably help me get to that state. But I like, and like, I don't know if I'm so tired and overworked to the point of exhaustion. I don't have that energy to, yeah, to be to play music. I need to really be like relaxed, and that's just not something I feel very often these days. Yeah, yeah. burnout. That's, yeah, that's, that's the sucks. same kind of um, the same kind of idea as like when people want to get into like the vibe of like exercising, working out mm-hmm. again, and they don't have the energy. But yeah. if you like force yourself in a tired state, not in an unhealthy way, but in a tired state to <laughs> go for that walk or that run or that like, you know, 30 minute, whatever, then you do have more energy. Yeah. So it's kind of like, but it's so hard when you're like that 30 minutes could be spent doing something else or literally just vegging on the couch because I'm exhausted. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. How about our last question before we reveal what your rising is, is what's something that maybe not many people know about you? Oh, no. Uh, Margaret's looking around. I talk a lot. I talk a lot. So I feel like everybody knows everything about me, but I guess probably not. Damn, I don't know. Um, I like, I like to cook, but I feel like my close friends know that about me. Yeah. For a long time, nobody knew I played music. So I was like super closeted about it. Um, yeah. But I've recently tried to be more vocal about sharing that as well. I would say something that most people don't know about me. Um, I think outwardly, I seem like somebody that's got it all together. And that mm. really um, is super, a uh, super positive person. And actually, I've really in my adult life, especially in the last uh, five or six years, I've really struggled a lot with anxiety and depression. And, uh, that's not something that you would know yeah. unless I've told you, well, hi listeners, here's all my dirty <laughs> secrets. Um, but it's again, part of that, like working on myself and delving into, you know, therapy and there's no shame. Everybody has highs and lows. And as a highly sensitive person, I realize I'm also more prone to anxiety and depression. So that makes me feel a little less alone, but, uh, I think we're all living through a really, Um, difficult time as well and so I think there's a lot of us that feel down and have the impression we have to put on a happy face because no one else is feeling that way but we all are is what I've realized everybody feels this way sometimes oh absolutely it's okay to talk about it it's okay to destigmatize it it's also one of those uh like the classic you know you see people who Um, like, I don't want to get so dark, but I just remember seeing it in like a suicide awareness type of thing where it's like, you need to check on your really happy friends because the ones who always seem like they have it all together, you know, especially, and I do really feel like that is a Capricorn moon thing as well, because the Capricorn moons are like, because as a general rule, I think Capricorn moons are so reliable in the perfect person you want in a crisis. And so it's like, because we can handle it doesn't mean that we don't feel everything. It means that we can Mm -hmm. go into boss energy mode during a really like chaotic moment 
And yes. then everybody's like, wow, you're so strong. You're so great to have around. Thanks. But then it's like, but you didn't check on me the next day when I was having a yeah. meltdown about it, you know? So yeah. that's, that's something too, where I think like what you just said about people might not know that about you, because I think we do put off this outward appearance of like, I've got my shit together so well and everything's great. And I'm, and I think just like, I don't know, you and I come across as kind of bubbly people when people meet yeah. us, you know? <laughs> and so you just wouldn't know yeah. that there's all this like, ah, on the inside going on too. Too. yeah that's wild yeah I, I would be interested to like know the research on like how many people who have committed suicide or like capricorn moons or like moons that are like in fall or detriment and stuff like that amy winehouse is what just came to mind yeah no horrible. way <gasps> yeah yeah, yeah, I yeah. think it's like, it's interesting too, because before my current amazing boyfriend has lived my life and we're probably going to be getting engaged very soon and <gasps> feel like understood <gasps> on a level that I've never felt understood and supported on a level that I never even probably knew I needed. Um, but I feel like I've always kind of been that person that other people turn to. Mm-hmm. And I never felt necessarily that I had, like, I have, I've got great solid friendships, but never felt like there was that one person that I could just completely rely on and would know how to support me in difficult times. And yeah, my boyfriend, pull up his chart like, after this. My boyfriend is that person, like 1000%. I would sometimes feel that way with my dad, but as I've gotten older, I've tried to be more self-reliant. But my boyfriend is just like my best friend and I can be having a terrible day or a terrible, you know, downward thought spiral about myself. And he just reminds me about my, my inner strength. Um, That's amazing. That's amazing. Cause that is really not easy to find. And no. And also what you said about like the person relying on and it being your dad, it also made me think like, I know we talked about this in the Capricorn moon episode too, but, uh, n- like statistically speaking, it's very common for Capricorn moons to have a very difficult relationship with their moms. And Capricorn is considered like the dad of the Zodiac. Yeah. yeah. Margaret, <laughs> Margaret's not, and, um, is considered so your dad like is your emotional caregiver. Yeah. Which like, I'm grateful no. that that's not the case for me, but I know that that is a, um, most of the time it is the case that having a really difficult relationship with your mom, uh, Capricorn moon. So the fact that you said your dad being that person, I think that that is another kind of vibe of that Capricorn moon energy. For sure. You know, I was and I'm wondering, the same thing. Oh, I'm wondering like now this is like my socioanthropology brain ticking, but I'm wondering if it's not because, you know, the mom in society tends to designate most of the like logistical missions of the household and run everything Mm. and if somehow Capricorn children threaten that uh cultural (gasps) order in some way by like this happened when I was home for vacation like I tried to tell my mom something about the washing machine just like a setting that like didn't work how it was supposed to and she got like mad at me (laughs) and I was like no like it's just like I'm I don't just know. trying I to help that, out with the order of the household. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that you know it might step on toes. Um, that's really, really, really interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know yeah. if that's actually backed now, up. I know. I can see. Like, I can see Martha's that meme with all the like quotes, <laughs> like you know the the what is it called like equations going on behind her. Oh She's God. like <laughs> literally for the next three days. I'm going to think about this now. My Scorpio oh my moon is like must get to the bottom. <laughs> oh my God. Love it. Well, Martha, would you have guesses? We know that Margaret is a Gemini with a Capricorn moon, but what do you think her rising is? Okay. I'm so thrown off because, okay, so I met Margaret at (laughs) Sierra's Sierra's birthday. (laughs) And when I met you, you came off cross as like kind of timid. And then when you've been talking through this episode, talking about, which is, I know you're not timid now. I know you're not. But in that big group (laughs) setting, you were more not super chatty like now and then you talking about highly sensitive and stuff I'm going towards water sign but now talking more I'm like or a Taurus rising because like you like cooking and you like music and that's like creation but then also maybe that's like that earth moon but okay I'm gonna go cancer rising yes <gasps> yes Shit. oh wow Look and, at you. and her mercury and venus are in Taurus <gasps> fuck yeah wow 
You're so good. Yeah, at I'm this. kind of like a whole bag of shit, right? It's like I had so much pressure on myself. I was like, if I get this wrong, like, I'm delivered. quitting my career. Oh my god, I I like always. I'm like such a hypocrite. I put this like I'm always like try to guess. I could never like I'm so. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm not great at guessing, but I'm like, do it, do it. You should know. But I no, was that writing was amazing. Notes in my head. You I was writing amazing. notes in my head. It's because you said my friends would describe me as like caring. Yes. I was yes. like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm a highly sensitive person. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, one of my best friends is a cancer um, and she's also a highly sensitive person. I feel like actually so many people that I'm very close with are highly sensitive people. Yeah. It's very interesting. I don't um, know if I would have guessed your rising sign if I didn't meet you in person. Mm, interesting. Because like in that setting, you were much more watery than yeah. like when it's this setting, like a small setting, your Gemini really comes out. Yeah. It's also like when we do these like calls via Zoom, you know, everybody's in their comfortable space. And so it's yeah, not like sure. a first meeting all the time, you know, because you're you're surrounded by your comfort zone. But well done, Martha. So, yeah, Margaret yeah, is nice. a, a cancer rising and you do have a lot of tourist placements, too, which I think is makes a lot of sense for all of your creating and singing and cooking and yeah. plants. Yeah, that's the cooking your, threw me off. Your whole apartment is so earthy. You've got and like when I was looking I at your chart, twenty five plants. <laughs> I know you have so many. You oh. have uh the, of your mm-hmm. you have two fire placements, two air, five water, and then seven earth. So you've got she have ninth house placements. No, she's got Pisces in the ninth though. What does that mean? You should uh, listen I, to our ninth, last episode. Ninth, ninth house is like. <laughs> later education so the fact that you're doing a doctorate I was like where's that ninth house energy one thing I will say about Margaret will be third before we before we go though is that um because Margaret is a cancer rising her midheaven is Aries and she has Mars at the midheaven in Aries (laughs) And so, so it means that like, I remember talking to you about this, like, it means that if you ever want someone to be on your side to fight for you, Margaret is your person. And like, I just remember like sitting outside at like a cafe with you and some guy rode by at a motorcycle really loud and you started yelling in French, like, you've got a small ZZ and like, you know, what? (laughs) (laughs) and just like, you're just like very, this, this fiery yeah. energy where like if anybody especially with that cancer rising of these are my this is my family these are my people these are my people I care about you mess with them I'm going to come at you with fire mm-hmm. like it's just very that's yeah. just very real or legal advice mm-hmm. I often give out yes. legal advice you do um and because that really pisses me off when people are trying to exploit people I care about and it happens all the time yeah you literally send like articles people of like, this yeah. is what you need to do legally. Here's the people you need to call. I do like a shit ton of, re- I'll like put everything I'm doing aside and just like re- deep research the shit out of whatever. Even like, I have a friend who's a jurist and she often asks me like, what do you think about this? And I'll be like, <laughs> this is what I think. Cause I, it just pisses me off to see people victimized. It yeah. angers me. And I think that's part of why I'm doing the studies I'm doing. And I'm also wondering, I think I'm going to do uh a master's in law after my PhD so I can Jesus quit researching the shitty things that these companies are doing and fucking sue them for them. I love Hell that. Yeah. I love Make that. Make them literally pay and fix their shit. Love the Capricorn moon part that made you say, <laughs> make them literally pay. <laughs> make them fucking pay and fix their bullshit. Not just, not just figuratively like make them pay, but like give us the money you owe. <laughs> and share it with all the inhabitants of the earth. <laughs> damn it okay well okay. on that note no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no that was awesome it was really it was really cool to get to like I love with the Gemini energy too we got a very chatty episode which is always great when we have chatty guests but um and it's really cool to see how all of that showed up in your life and showed up in different placements and it's also just really cool that Martha you freaking guessed that because yeah that was I a well educated guess that. bad props <laughs> it was intuitive I love it. I love it. Well, thanks for being our guest, Margaret, and happy Capricorn moon season. And yeah, everybody hug a cat moon friend because they need it. And check in on your strong friends. Okay, group hug. Yeah, group Group hug. Group Zoom hug. (laughs) (laughs) We have our second Capricorn moon guest. Welcome, Lacey. Hi. 
We're so excited to have Lacey here. And one of the most exciting things is that you're like a legit listener, Patreon member, and now you're on the podcast. (laughs) Yes. I feel like I've elevated. I'm so (laughs) excited. Yeah. Yeah. You are an ascended listener. Yes. (laughs) Yes. So excited to have you here. So we have like, yeah, Mimi right before this was like, which one of your friends are we interviewing? I was like, more than that, we have like someone really. I know. I just thought we were pulling from like the trough of Sierra's friends. And she goes, we're actually interviewing a a Patreon member. But like, I love it. Even though you like we got connected through Patreon, obviously you're Capricorn Moon and felt that connection right away. So it's just been really great to get to know you, even just through like doing readings for you. And yeah. um, and we're so excited to have you here. Thank you so much. The readings were amazing and spot on and totally inspired by those. And being asked to be on the podcast is like <laughs> <laughs> excited. So great. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about you, where you're from, where you are now, or anything important we should know. Awesome. My name is Lacey, and I am originally from Aurora, Colorado. Um, Moved to Missouri about 20 years ago. And then a few years ago, moved back to Denver, started a cleaning business, and now I'm back in Missouri. So I'm doing both. I'm I'm kind of everywhere. So (laughs) nice. (laughs) doing everything. Yeah. All right. So like, is it, and you're kind of back in the area that you're like really familiar with or it's, um, yes, I'm back here trying to settle down. Um, I have people running the cleaning business in Denver, so I'm feeling more relaxed about that, but I've restarted my cleaning business out here in Missouri and Cat Moon say what? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) What's up, boss lady? You know, it's talking. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. (laughs) My one business is running fine, so I decided to start a second. That's so real. (laughs) Oh man, yes. Plus the other things I want to do too. So (laughs) So many other things. Goal oriented, Cat Moon. Love it for sure. Um, What are your thoughts and feelings on astrology? Do you believe in it? I absolutely believe. I'm not sure how long I've probably the last 10 years or so I've been reading my astrology. Now I'm kind of into tarot and doing that. And I've also been getting trained into human design, which also encompasses astrology plus I Ching and there's things. It's like a parent to kind of everything you could know (laughs) through so many methods. Like, above Enneagram and the Meyer Briggs, if you like those type of things, mm-hmm. human design is at the top. It yeah. doesn't change. It doesn't well, and change. also <laughs> it uses your birth information, right? Whereas I think Enneagram is more like a personality quiz. Yeah, yes. And yes. if you want to be a certain person, you can kind of skew your answers. So. Exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, birthday doesn't hide it's anything. Your chart, it's your chart. <laughs> yeah. And it works and it's not a bad thing either. Yeah. It's there to help you. We'll have to talk about human design at some point. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love, I love, like, I'm such a Myers-Briggs Enneagram. I feel like a lot of people who are into astrology, like we all are like personality tests. Tell me about me. And this is like, (laughs) this is something like I just like learned recently about human design. So that's so, that's super fascinating. I love that it incorporates astrology in it. Yeah, Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Very cool. So we, it's safe to say that astrology is part of like your- I don't want to say daily, daily life, life, but yeah. yeah. Okay, oh, cool. well, Lacey would. Yeah. So <laughs> I have cards here, cards there. There's cards. I'm a deck downstairs. Yeah, it's it's everywhere. My kids, uh, fellow love collector, it. love it. <laughs> if you can see this little shelf behind me right here of tarot yes. cards, that's what's I going. On. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, getting into some like Cat Moon vibes. It's so also good that yeah. that um uh, as a fellow Cat Moon, I'm glad that we have like Mimi here as not cat moon to kind of keep us uh <laughs> on course keep us uh, on track but well, also no. like like this is not normal kind of you know yeah yeah, also, yeah cat moon doesn't need being put on track but maybe I'll I'll add in a little needed chaos maybe with my little Aries son there you go there you go Please love it yes so for cat moon questions do you think do you feel that you had a lot of responsibility especially as a child Absolutely. Um, 
first thing that comes to mind, I, the day I turned 12, my mom took me to go get my babysitting license. And literally that night I was taking care of three kids that were <laughs> under the age of five. I wow. mean, it was oh literally, my, God. It, it my brother and sister or anything. So yeah, from, yeah, responsibility has always been on my plate. <laughs> wow. That is so that just brought, I literally got my babysitting license too. And I didn't even have that memory until you said that I like used to babysit my neighbors. Like as soon as I turned, I think it was probably 12. What? Wait, there's a babysitting license. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh. back in the nineties type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like it was, I, there was a bunch of kids in my neighborhood and I was like, when I am of the responsible age that one is allowed to be a babysitter, I will get certified in this. Therefore I can be paid responsibly. (laughs) Well, here is the first, um, the first example of that is not normal because only a Capricorn moon was like, I have to follow the rules and get the license. And my Aries ass is like, you got a nine-year-old I'm 11. I'll watch it. Whatever. (laughs) Like Looking back. I mean, it's so it's yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like, no, I must get the appropriate paperwork done in order to take on this responsibility. (laughs) I seriously remember like 12 year old, like maybe 13 year old Sierra being like with like a baby doll, like doing the CPR thing. And and yeah. And having my little like paper certificate and being like, I can watch my neighbors now. Exactly. That is so funny. So (laughs) there that's responsibility as a child. That's so funny. I didn't even know I had that memory there. Wow. Yeah. I'm glad I was able to bring that up for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Wild. I appreciate it though. I mean, it's taught me from age 12 to really be responsible. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did you, I'm sorry, this isn't on there, but did you ever feel like burdened by that responsibility? Um, looking back now, yes. But at the time it was me being able to get out of my house and do something different. But yeah, it was a burden because I was <laughs> taking care of three kids. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's a huge responsibility at 12 looking back. Yeah. That's I wouldn't so- do that to my kids and my kids are older, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But as a Capricorn moon, you're just like, this is the way it is. Obviously yeah. this is what I'm going to do. And as yeah. you grow older, you realize, oh, that wasn't the norm. Yeah. <laughs> but I was yeah. up for the I'm, job. I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah. That, that's so true. I'm just thinking like, you know, I had a really wonderful childhood and absolutely no reason to need to even make money as a 13 year old, like, or you just wanted the job. I, I, yeah, I feel like it was just like, this is, it was like now, I don't know, even like I got my license the minute that I could get my license. It's just thinking like, this is the next responsibility thing that I am allowed with age. Mm. It was countdown. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, that is yeah. so interesting. That's super validating from cat moon to cat moon. <laughs> I know. I feel better now. It's like, okay, so I'm not alone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. <laughs> interesting. Um, so how would your closest friends describe you? Even, Even just, just like a, a couple yeah. words. Yeah. Loyal, funny, spontaneous. Mm. oh love right. it putting that in the bank so that i can guess <laughs> <laughs> later <Bink. Yeah>. love <laughs> it. yeah like the loyal i think can be applied to so many signs but um i think that when if we're la- relating to cat moon like loyalty coming to a point where i feel like reliable is the, the more cat moon word but i think that mm-hmm. a lot of friends like the idea of like i can count on you like you are a loyal friend, but it's that also idea of I can count on you. Yeah. Yeah, Dependability. When we moved, when I was 15 from technically it was Aurora, Colorado, but out here to Missouri, I was told after that summer that I was the glue that kept everybody together. So like, Hmm, you know, and that's kind of with friends and with family too. So. Yeah. So, so real with like the, (laughs) the one who like can not necessarily wants to be the one to keep it all together, but has the ability to therefore always steps up. Yeah. And just does it innately. It, and it's yeah. Second nature. It's not an issue or it's not um, weird. A choice. Yeah. It's natural. <laughs> Very. Sounded real happy there, Sierra. <laughs> it's not, but it's like, it's just not, I feel like there's so many times where it's yeah. like, you know, in a crisis situation, like, like, thank you so much for doing that. And it's like, 
it wasn't an act of choice for me to do it. Like I was in the situation and it was just being done because that's what had to be done. Like mm, that's yeah, just what period. had to be done. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> mm. Well, speaking of uh, friends and how they would describe you, do your friends tend to be the ones to come to you in stressful situations or for advice, knowing that you are the one to hold it all together? So now my friend circle is a little bit smaller, but yes. Um, yeah, I feel like I just kind of have knowledge for everything. So ask me, I'm here to help, you know, and that's, mm. that's really how I feel like I just portray myself too. So if a friend is in a crisis or something, do you feel like you are like you hold it together or yes. do you spew yes. information at it or just spew like these are next steps? I am, I feel like since I can read people a little bit more, I'm there to whatever you want me to be there. If you want Mm. me to guide you through something, I can do that. Um, I do hold it together. If there's an emergency, I'm calm. Mm. (laughs) I'm, I'm the one that afterwards I'm like, how did I get through that? Like, yeah, happened, you know? So yes, yes. I think that's a strong earth moon trait because I have that as well, where it's like, okay, we are an emotional, we are in an emotional state and like things need to be done for it. If there's nothing to be done for it, I'm like, great, let's just cry it out in the bathroom. Right. But if there's something that can be done and like my friend needs steps, I'm there and I will hold it together for them. Yep. Absolutely. I like that you also said that, like, I can't believe I just did that. Like, I can't believe I got through it. Like I, there's like that level of I can be strong AF in the moment, but don't think that like, there's like this, I, you know, going back to what we mentioned, like in the, in the first Capricorn moon episode, it's just like, there's not a lack of feeling all the things it's this, mm. I can handle all the things. It doesn't necessarily mean I want to handle all the things, but right. I'm going to handle all the things and I'm going to have my little meltdown about it when it's safe to do so. <laughs> and mm. yeah, that happened earlier last week. Um, Wednesday actually and I keep it together but then there was a couple things that just made me a little sad and I just had to cry it out but it was six weeks ago that I really cried about anything and it probably was (laughs) yeah yeah I like I was having this kind of panic attack at one point and like this was like a couple years ago at this point now and I was like what is happening why am I having this and then I was like oh yeah (laughs) Like there was a huge family issue and I had to help everybody and fix it all mm-hmm. myself. And I probably suppressed all of that. And it's been about two weeks. Mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like- I mean, you guys probably take on the weight of like being able to fix something or being capable and dependable in those situations that you don't realize that you yourself also need being taken care of. Literally right now. That's why I cried about it. <laughs> yeah. Because- the family transition is there's a lot of transitioning transitionings happening within the family and I just had my breaking point last week, you know, yeah. it's like everything will be okay, yeah. but am I strong enough to do all this? And do I want to be the one to handle it? Cause right now I just don't, you know, cause mm-hmm. I feel like I have a lot of things happening, but it's like, Lacey, do your cry. You've got the, <laughs> you're, you're supposed to be here. Like this is just yeah. the timing of everything. So mm-hmm. did you guys see the um the new Disney and Encan- Encanto Encanto however oh of course no, I haven't. yes <laughs> okay like the the sister who's super strong don't spoil it I'm and I'm just giving a character description I got you okay, okay. um <laughs> like the sister who's super strong and like her song is always like they're expecting her to do more and more and like just ask your sister she can carry the weight just ask your sister she can carry the weight that like when you were saying that I just got chills when you were saying that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it it gave me that like energy so much of like just like oh well they know I can handle it so they they give it to me they know I can handle it so they give it to me and mm. at some point it's like yes I can handle it but it, it doesn't break. mean <laughs> yeah it doesn't mean it's not heavy just because right. yeah 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 so right great right. imagery yeah. so <laughs> it seems like you you like communicate with yourself when it comes to emotions and when you're having that moment but do you how do you how openly do you speak on your emotions when you are struggling, like to other people? Well, I just told my mom yesterday while I was crying last week. So, okay. you know, <laughs> some so, time. Okay. It, I probably, I feel like since I've, I don't want to say parent myself or anything like that, because that's not how it was. But since I've had to work through all my own things, I feel like 
when I cry, that's it. And I'm done. But I need to be able to speak better on it because Mm. if I were able to talk my feelings out, I probably wouldn't cry as much, but that's Mm. being vulnerable, you know? So I'm learning that. That's that's something I'm really learning. Yeah, Hmm. that definitely. Yeah. It's, it is, it's such a learning process. It's like, even just learning like for ourselves, like I think even just society wise, like when it comes to, especially like, you know, toxic masculinity and everything, like crying isn't weakness like that. And, you know, and so, and even just being vulnerable doesn't mean being weak. And I think that we're all kind of going through this like society world, like learning of that, like, you know, just putting on a, on like a strong face, like means that you're a strong person. And it's like, no, actually effectively communicating about like things that you're feeling makes you a stronger person. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, When I finally realized that like emotions were my superpower, like they were what made me a unique person. That's when my life really started taking off because you take ownership and you, you know, you sit in this like reality of what your emotions can do. And yeah, it's very similar because yeah, yesterday I was like, well, I could cry about this internally. I had something I was going through and I could cry about this internally. And then I could take out that anger on somebody else, or I could just talk about what I'm angry about, right. you know, and that fixes it, that like tangible thing to do. Yeah. We've also been conditioned through our lives to hold things in or don't mm-hmm. be like that, or don't do this. And with human design, the last year I've been learning to decondition all the conditioning mm-hmm. and really knowing that <clears throat> I'm supposed to be how I am, who mm-hmm. I am. And yeah, so yeah, what you just said, Sierra, totally hit me because I do need to be vulnerable. It's like being able to let that go is something that needs to happen. And yeah. Yeah. It's like the things that we were conditioned to not do as a kid are, yeah, like you said, deconditioning. We need to become who we freely were as children in order to be like our real selves more childlike. I mean, that's what we all need to be is just be happy within ourselves. And does that really make us happy? And it's okay to be free, you know, Yes, it is. It's okay to, because we're still going to get our things done, you know? (laughs) Yeah. It's such beautiful work. It's also, I remember in doing the readings that I've done with you, like explaining how, um, like you, when you do share the more vulnerable parts of yourself, it's such a superpower in a way where it, it it's not only helping you heal, it's helping other people around you. Mm. And I think that that's something that every time, like, you know, one of like somebody that I, I witnessed somebody sharing something that was really difficult. I'm like, wow, you're strong. Yeah. I need to do that more. Right. And, and that is something that I think is really hard for like this earth moon energy, but particularly Capricorn moon energy, because it is this boss energy of like, I have to be the one running the ship, holding it together. Yeah. I I have to be. And if I am not holding the wheel, how can I make sure somebody else is going to hold the wheel? Because I know I do it well. And if somebody else, like, even if somebody else says they're going to do it, are they going to do it? Are they going to do it as good as they're going to do it the way I will? Yeah. (laughs) Oh guys, that's with my cleaning business. Um, (laughs) Oh Lord. (laughs) That gives me a little, training people I've trained them exactly how I want them to do it but they're not me right and Mm -hmm. and I have to know that you've been trained and we've done a week of training you're doing great I have to be able to let that maybe their vacuum lines aren't as good as mine you know but they're still showing up and doing the job and I have to relax about that because they're Mm -hmm. doing it Oh, it's man. so interesting because I was listening to this podcast and I haven't read this book, nor do I need to read this book, but um, they were talking about this book that's something like how not to kill your husband or how not to mm. hate your husband or something. And it's geared towards new moms who are like, I know how to take care of my baby. Right. And like, they don't give the jobs to the dads because they're like, I know how to do this. I know I can do it better. And there's some section in the book that's like, take the prize. Like he's going to take the baby for a walk. He might not do it the same way you would. And right. he might forget like a hat, but he He's going to learn to remember it if he messes up a little and ultimately the baby's going to be okay. Right. So it's sort Ooh. of, I feel like for Capricorn moon, like take the prize, just accept the prize. Yeah, that gave me chills. Thank you. I know. Well, I'm like, I don't even have kids, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it doesn't have to be for kids. I mean, I think we can all no, relate when, when no. you have a partner that, you know, you want something to get done. You want it to get done right. You're like, I might as well do it, but then dishwasher. Yeah. Dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. That's so funny. And that is like perfectly tying into our next question of, do you think your emotional state is tied to how successful you're feeling? (laughs) Yes. But I I really need to learn to let that go because I'm doing good. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Give myself (laughs) grace. That's sort of, I have a, I guess a two-parter, but do you feel like you're ever at a point of success or is there always something more? Why are you calling us out like that? <laughs> right. Oh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I do want more. Sarah's in a fit of laughter. <laughs> yeah. I have a cleaning business in Denver and I'm doing it in Missouri and I have family in Arizona. So why not do all three? You know, like mm. that's my thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I'm only, I'm not even halfway done, but. Oh, no, man. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. So do you feel present in where, what you're working on now, or are you always sort of like seeking what's going to happen in the future? I have learned to live in the moment because yes, I prepare for the future, but that's kind of like anxiety for me. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I write out my goals. I know what I need to do. I know my daily, my weekly, my monthly. Um, so I just get up and do what I need to do. Mm-hmm. I do have my days scheduled, so I'm not off track. And that really makes me feel more aligned. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. I Girl, think I would feel more aligned. She's answers that now I'm, yeah. now I'm all over the place with what your signs are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited for you to guess. <laughs> God. Man, that like, this is one of those questions when, um, Mimi and Martha were helping like come up with these questions and it was the emotional state tied to being successful. I was like, I feel seen right now and yeah. it's a little uncomfortable, but yeah. also like, <laughs> isn't everybody else not this way? Like it just, it felt really, um, yeah. I wonder that. <laughs> so yeah. we're not, yeah, I wonder that all the time. Like don't other people do this, but I know my sister doesn't do it like that, but that's my mm. sister. But yeah. okay. So my other friends aren't, but all right. Okay. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Well, I feel like a huge keyword for Capricorn is kind of success. Cause they're seeking goals and like, uh, uh, what is the word I'm thinking? Like completion of goals. Mm. And so I guess a good question is what is success to you? Is it financial? Is it emotional? Like, what does that mean to you? I, I would be lying if I said it wouldn't be financial. Um, Mm -hmm. I would like to have a certain cap that I just don't have to worry about anything. You Mm -hmm. know, I'm working on that. Definitely working on that. But yeah, emotional would be nice too, just because I, my Chiron returns happen. So I'm doing a lot of working on my emotions. So I would say that, yes, that would be for me emotions would be the thing like su- successful because I haven't done that yet. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Successfully. I haven't been in control of that so much. I have, but haven't, you know, but I like that almost evolution too, where yeah. it goes from the tangible successful goal to something a little bit less. You can't tangibly say, Hey, look here, I worked on my emotions, you know, yeah. but you can say, Hey, look here at my bank account. Hey, look here at my business and all yeah. of my employees and, and whatever is going on with that. But you can't tangibly measure, you know, that's something that your emotional all- exactly. involvement. Yeah, exactly. So I, I like I that evolution to out too, you know, and now the kids are, the kids especially are telling me, Hey mom, you know, things are better. And I've noticed that I'm just more calm and Mm. I'm not sure what's happened, but I'm here for it. (laughs) I feel like that's something with, uh, like when people begin to feel more aligned and connected to who they are and sort of begin to evolve that way, success does become, it, it radiates into other areas of life, right? Like we're all sort of conditioned to be like this capitalist, Mm -hmm. I don't know, just mindset. So success is money. And I don't think there's any shame in saying like, I feel successful when I have a good bank account, when I feel safe financially, there's no shame in that at all. And I think as you get more connected to yourself and you evolve, there's sort of like, oh, well now success is just being well-rounded and Mm -hmm. being able to balance every area of my life in that way. I remember reading something about, it was specifically talking about uh, Capricorn Venus placements, but I do think this applies Mm. to most Capricorn placements, especially with two Capricorn parents, um, where Capricorns like age in reverse. 
yeah. and and have like you know they're like this little responsible like management child and then end up loosening up as they get older <clears throat> and I really do feel that in like I mean I'm still pretty like uh, I have my my tight mm. grip on a lot of things but I do see how like man just thinking of my mom too how she was like had to be the person in control of her entire life for so long and now she's like i'm not gonna give away the, my most recent visit but she was letting loose when i went home last time and was just like going right. wild and i'm like who is this who are you you know and so who i think she? that there's this like aging in reverse in a way of like man i like i uh, accomplished the tangible things now i can work on the not tangible things and just like breathe a little bit. So I think mm. that that kind of what Love you were that. saying too. Yeah. Of like this letting, you know, you're like, I don't know necessarily what's happening, but I'm here for it. It's almost like, it seems like that aging in reverse of like a little bit more lighthearted. Cause I feel like we're so heavy. <laughs> so yeah. like- I'm going to remember that. I'm really going to, because I've always wondered why am I so childlike? Because mm. I do just let's go, let's go have fun. Let's go mm-hmm. roller coasters. Let's go do things. Let's let's do something fun. And um, aging in reverse. I love that. I'm here. Yeah. For that. <laughs> yeah. So kind of on that, do you, did you look much older than you were as a kid? Like, did you always look more mature? Why oh. are you calling us out on this? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> always, always. But you know how they're doing that 10 year challenge on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I did it, but the only picture that I had for whatever reason was when my son was a baby and he's 16 now. And I'm like, you know what? I actually look pretty good. I yeah, no, look- you said you were going through your Chiron return and I was, I was surprised. You look, you look great because your Chiron return happens at a certain age. So yeah, like- and I'm a few years older than that too. So yeah. <laughs> it is like, and I love that. I love that. Like the Facebook thing. Like, I, look, I look pretty good. Like, no, yeah. I, no, that's just, but what you said, Mimi, about like the, did you were always like older as a child? I remember like literally going on a family vacation when I had just finished sophomore year of high school. And like, like we went to whatever, it doesn't matter. We were like someone were on vacation. We were talking to them, doing a tour of something. And they were like, oh, like, where do you go to school? I was like, centennial high school and they're like <laughs> oh oh like they were asking me what university i went to i'm like right. i'm 14 okay like and yeah. and i mean this is horrible horrible every time every time i went on vacation with my dad because my dad's my travel buddy and my mom like became a lot less travely and i always went on trips with my dad they always always thought that i was my dad's wife oh yep. and it's like and it's like I don't know which is more offensive. I'm pretty sure that it's more offensive to be like, oh, is this your daughter? And it to be your wife. Like, that's probably more offensive. But still to be like, (laughs) is this your wife? And it's like, no, it's my daughter. Listen, if you're not sure, don't ask. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. And I like when my dad and I first came to France, like, I mean, what that was, I don't know, 2015 ish. Um. I like, we went to the Moulin Rouge and we like had tickets at the, at like, and you share a table with a bunch of people, like you eat dinner together. And like, we were like, we weren't, weren't really like, they weren't really warming up to us. And my dad's like such a chatty person. Then he's like, so where are you guys from? My daughter and I are visiting from blah, blah, blah. And everyone was like, oh, oh. <laughs> and it was just, I'm like, man, every time we go on a trip, he has to do that. And I'm like, I don't look old. Like I don't yeah, look no. old, but at the yeah. same time, like, I, I don't look, I guess, as young as I am. But now I feel like, like, I went to a friend's party and I said, like, I was the oldest one there. And I was so used to being the baby always with like a November birthday. And yeah. I said something, I was like, you guys are babies. And they're like, how old are you? I'm like, I just turned 31. And they were like, what? Like, no way. And it's like, go keep talking, keep talking. What, yeah. what is that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously. I'll elaborate. Be- <laughs> I'm 36. So I get that. Um, Wait, you can't have gone through your Saturn or your Chiron return. Isn't it at 30? No, Chiron Saturn's returns at 50. Return. Oh, Saturn oh, return. Yeah, Saturn, yeah, yeah. 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 I was like, there's okay. I, when you said okay. Chiron return, I was like, this woman's yep. 50 okay, so years Saturn. old. Yep. Yep. <laughs> no yeah. Way. Okay. So not there yet, but closer. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no way. Yeah. Excuse me. I got that mixed up. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, Saturn's return is is a time as well. But yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, yeah. um, I'm going to try to get us back on track. 
that even though love a good tangent. Um, <laughs> but yeah, sorry. It's me. It's up to you. Yeah. Uh, so because the moon is who you are when you're alone and you might not show it to everybody, we were wondering if you had absolutely uninterrupted alone, chill time, what would you spend that time doing? Okay. So if I'm in Denver, definitely going floating because they have all the cool things out there. Um, nature. I like to just sit outside. If I'm in Missouri and it's cold like now, let me just shut the door and just hang out because Mm. I do so much and I'm always talking to everybody and I'm kind of just giving my energy. I just like to literally not do anything. Just Mm. not do anything. Really. I like that. (laughs) This helps me. Thank you. I know. I, I, was, I, I know. I bet you know now. I, I have a feeling. <laughs> I was saying with our first Capricorn Moon guest, I'm like the biggest hypocrite because I'm like, guess, guess what they are. And I'm like, I wouldn't want to be put on the spot like that and have pressure trying to guess someone's signs, but <laughs> but do it, Mimi, do it. Um, <laughs> you get it wrong. <laughs> No, it's well, that like cat moon needs to protect yourself. You don't want to look like you got something wrong. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I'll take the hit. I'll take the hit. Yeah. I'll be the first one to admit when I when I do wrong things, just like the Chiron, when I said the wrong thing, it is what it is. Like I've yeah. learned, I made a lot of mistakes. I will accept it. <laughs> mm. I need to get there. I need to. I. I need to get there because I, I can remember the little tiny thing like that. If I like said Chiron return instead of Saturn's return on an episode and like 10 years from now, I'd be like, man, I can't believe I said that. Like I will, I will remember. Oh, I'll that be moment. thinking about it. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll be thinking about it, but it is what it is. <laughs> well, I think that's just more important as a testament to what a Capricorn moon, like the high regard that you put yourselves to. Yes. And that's another, yeah. like, like, I don't know if you relate to this as well, but I mean, I would assume being a Capricorn moon, like what I was talking about with their first guest is that I feel like we have such high standards for ourselves and others Mm. that it just leaves us so much farther to fall because it's like, if I don't, if I don't achieve this ridiculously high goal for myself, I've not just fallen off the curb. I've fallen off a cliff. And if maybe I set a realistic expectation and I fell, okay, I fell, but like, I didn't break every bone. Whereas this is like, there's so much farther to fall. Like I feel I don't know. I, I definitely see that as a Capricorn moon tendency of setting such sometimes unrealistically high expectations, especially yeah. for myself. And I think that's specific to the moon. I mean, I think Capricorn suns would as well, but that Capricorn moon, you are emotionally tied to how well you feel you're doing and how much you have reached your expectations or not reached your expectations. So, yeah, yeah. I think not reaching is I can play that mind game more of Mm. why, 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 why? But that's where I'm learning to stop and think about literally anything else. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Stop that negative talk because I'm really doing good. Yeah. I say that again, Lacey. You're doing great. (laughs) No, Lacey, I want to hear you say it. (laughs) Stop. And I'm really doing it good. I am. I swear I am. (laughs) I I literally do tell myself that though. I like Lacey, get it together. Just stop. (laughs) Yeah. You're killing it. I, um, I love that. Um, I feel like that one meme that I've seen floating around really applies to us in the way of like one part of me is like, (laughs) I am so amazing. Like nobody is better than me. And like, I am literally like, it's like the complete opposite. Like, you know, I, Mm -hmm. I am horrible. I don't accomplish anything slash worthless piece of dust. Yeah. Yeah. Slash I am like the ideal, like, (laughs) I'm the (laughs) ideal piece of dust all right (laughs) yes yes I think that's also such a big journey of like evolving too because you you do start to find that self-empowerment but you also have to realize like you can't feed your ego so much so you know it's this great balance of I'm the best and I'm not enough so yeah it so is so is well do you have do you have guesses Mimi for Lacey's top three well, I think we got one more question, right? Do we? <gasps> we do. I forgot. 
I forgot. See, I'm going to be thinking about this later. I'm going to be like, I messed it up. I, I messed no, it up. No, you didn't. You didn't. We're just no. real people, guys. No, for real. Like w- this podcast has helped me a lot. Be like, well, we're going to roll with the punches. I'm a Sagittarius. Mm. So I do have that ability. It sometimes can overpower the cat moon. Um, what's I'm something- just saying also just as a listener too, it's okay because you're human. And I exactly. appreciate that because if it's just, if it's edited to where you know that it's been like messed with, then Calculated, sometimes yeah. you lose it. So mm-hmm. yeah. it's good. It's good. Yeah. It, real people, real conversations, real Kevins, yes. yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is something that maybe not many people know about you? I, ooh, so I don't know what a lot of people don't know. I have, um, you don't mind me sharing I am a recovering addict and actually February 4th will be nine years and I'm super proud of that because that's amazing yeah um because I was not a good person for a very long time so that's conflicting with me too you know Mm. like why wasn't I good enough for myself or my kids why did I put my everybody through all that but today we're good we're working through things everybody's back together um so if you've really made really bad decisions you can always do better and I think I'm a testament to that because I really couldn't I really if if I didn't get help I would not be here today so I mean it's just that's just facts um that's so beautiful that is so yeah that's so inspiring and that's really big like to share that. So really appreciate that. And that is just like, you know, everybody is going to take something away from that, like inspiration. That's just super powerful, especially, you know, knowing everything that you've accomplished now with all that, you know, that cat moon determination, but like, that's also, it's a, like some people consider it to be a hard placement and some, and I feel like that Saturn energy is very, like we always talk about, one part restriction, one part abundance. And it just feels like you have like flipped it to that abundance. So Mm -hmm. like wildly. So thank you. Yeah. It's been a lot of work. Um, and it's, it's, we're still working, but yeah, we're doing great and I'm doing great. And I appreciate that. That makes me feel good. (laughs) Oh yeah. I don't, I don't want to speak on your experience, but I mean, I have some experience with addiction and specifically alcoholism and there's, just the way you said, like the decisions I made and why did I put people through that? And just, that's not, it wasn't a choice, you know, there's just a bodily tendency to escape, escape towards other substances. And that's not a choice. And just to relate it to astrology and certainly doesn't have to be true and tell me if it's not, but a Capricorn moon could definitely escape because they have been told to be responsible for so much and to, to control so much, you know, and from my experience with um, addiction, it's, it's all about, I need to control what I'm feeling. And this is the way that I can either lose that need for control or feel like I am in control. You just hit it right on the head. That is absolutely it. And it, it almost like within addiction is being able to lose control too Mm -hmm. um but I can control this too you know it's like yeah exactly it's a vicious cycle um yeah I'm thankful that I'm out of that and I'm thankful that for you also like recovery who if it was you or you know who it was but I'm glad that recovery is an option for everybody and that you're doing it and that I'm doing it and that like you know, we can be here to help other people. (laughs) And to break the stigma that you can't talk about it and that like recovery is a bad word or that addiction is a bad word kind of thing. Just, just to bring light to it, that it exists in, in a lot of people's lives. So, yeah. And especially in the little town that I grew up in, there's so many people who are lost and have lost their lives are also recovering. And it's, Mm beautiful to know that I have made it this far and it's beautiful to know that people I've used with are also getting help too and Mm. it's just even coming back here and living here knowing that I can be strong and not Mm. use you know yeah that's even more powerful being back in in like you said like a similar you know area environment and that's just like that's 
extra strength that oh my gosh sure it's so easy to regress back to who you were when you go back to yes you know and and bringing it bringing it back to astrology for a minute i remember that you also have chiron in your first house just like Mm. me and those chiron first house placements people see you as just like a healer and Mm -hmm. i and just sharing that story like i am so sure that people who are listening and, you know, it just causes a ripple effect. And that's yeah. like super brave to have shared that. But also knowing your astrology, it's it's mm-hmm. even more. It's just the ripple effect is just happening right now. And so I Beautiful, just yeah. love that. I love that. So bravo. <laughs> that's so funny because she had said something about what I heal in myself. I'm healing in others. And I was like, that sounds like a Chiron prominent person. <laughs> <laughs> in also human design my crop my incarnation cross is cross of consciousness so i'm here to Mm. live life and do things and to be able to be that person to be like hey maybe you don't want to do it and here's why or you know let me help you do it so yes i i love all of this stuff just if you don't believe believe yeah (laughs) yeah i know yeah well shall we go into your top three yeah Mm -hmm. We had mistakenly revealed, revealed her rising sign, but Sorry. it's okay. <laughs> but for those of you listening, if you had a guess, just think yes, about that guess now. now. Mm. So I was thinking about her son. And when I first saw you, I was like something, well, I've been tied between water and earth, or water and fire is what I've been tied before, mm. between. But with all of this conversation, you're so friendly and you're saying just picking apart pieces of information from every part of your life and that you're bopping around, moving around. I'm just feeling real Sag vibes from you. Am I wrong? You're wrong, but you're not. You're like you're close. And I believe that your cat moon is in your ninth house. Yes. Well, I was thinking that because we know her rising is Taurus. So I did. I was thinking that maybe that's just coming from that. But my initial thing was like, oh, maybe Scorpio Sag. And then, but no, what is it? What's your sun sign? I am a Gemini. Oh, (laughs) okay. All right. So like not far, not far. I don't feel so bad. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I love Sages too. Like Mm -hmm. Aries Sages. I know that's, I'm, I'm here for that. Uh, Well, that's us. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I know. I know. It just works perfect. (laughs) Amazing. So then uh, for those who have been guessing, why don't you reveal what your rising sign is? Or maybe me just said it. Taurus rising. Taurus rising. Um, I like, I was, it's so funny. I was talking to Guillaume um, about uh, like hit my mother-in-law, his mom, uh, is a Taurus rising. And I was, I was just like, I don't think I know any other Taurus rising. And then I was like, Oh my God, we're interviewing Lacey. Lacey's a Taurus rising. <laughs> yeah. But there is this like, I don't know, just like, boom, here I am energy. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, I think your North nodes conjunct your rising. Yes. And so wow. it's just like you, your presence is meant to be here and be upfront and boom i just feel like taurus like bull like here i am boom really energy. sitting in you yeah. yeah love it do you have any aries placements like mercury or Ooh, i don't think i have any aries i have mostly capricorn sag um gemini and there's aquarius also oh, okay and there might be i'm not sure i don't have it pulled up right this second no worries i was just curious about about that 12th house yeah. Um, she's got uh, Venus go. in uh, Aries in the 12th. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Hmm. So what so does that mean go. again? Just because. Well, you're, totally you're like. House and Venus or Venus in the 12th house. Yeah. And it's, and it is intercepted for those of who have listened and understand that uh, and know oh, what that thank means. Thank you. I was wondering. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you have that. So that like is becoming available to you, like has become more available to you recently. Uh, because right. of that interception but the way that you uh feel loved show love in that fiery aries way but almost like in a in that 12th house feeling like you're part of something bigger feeling like the connectedness with others um yeah i don't know you can add on to that maybe yep. if you have more yep. words. yeah just having like a solid consciousness of everybody but mm-hmm. because it's aries it's also very much focused on you and like in relationships you you can't forget about you like push yourself aside but you might have that tendency because it's in the 12th house Mm -hmm. 
sorry i'm calling you out <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so i yeah okay i don't choose i lose myself absolutely in relationships mm-hmm. so that's something yeah. i'm learning i'm single now but i'm going i'm taking that into the next well you're the perfect example of that interception becoming available like that information and that growth being available to you now in your mid-30s yeah okay absolutely Oh yeah. Thank you ladies. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you so Lacey, much. It was so yeah. nice to meet you. I loved this. I loved meeting you. This yes, was so was fun. great meeting you also. Sierra, thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you for being our guest. Gone from like listener to Patreon member to Capricorn Moon guest. You know I love a fellow Cat Moon and this has been awesome. Yay, thank you. <laughs>